We are in Florence. That looks so naughty, mate. Holy hell. Will, another very romantic destination that I'm not here with my girlfriend. I'm here with you. Okay, we're gonna punch a hole in the start of today with Dita Artigianali. There are five of them in Florence. It's a cafe, absolutely nails brunch. Do they serve Negronis? I think. Uh, when in Rome? We're in Florence, yeah. Rome, yeah. This is a coffee masseuse. This is like the signature drink here. It is a spin on the tiramisu, but in an iced coffee form. Do you call these ladies' fingers? Lady fingers. It's sweet, but it's, you know, it hits that bliss point nicely. Right, puff sandwich with a crust cock. The chicken, bacon, lettuce, tomato, some sun dried tomatoes, and the bacon is all like mashed up and super crispy. It's great. This is their asparagus toast asparagus, burrata, spinach, tomato, asparagus, pesto, mashed up asparagus. Happiness. Na, 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 na. Very fresh, very summery. This is really Moorish, dude. So good. Oh, man. All right, goodie bags for the lads. Who's going to be carrying these out for the rest of the evening? <laughs> OK, come to the best wine bar in Florence. In Oteca Piti Gola e Cantina. Practice that a few times. We're starting things off with some bubbles. This is a no prosecco zone. All three of their sites, no prosecco. This is beautiful and dry, very refreshing. And apparently it's going to set us up well for the wine that we're about to drink. Oh, for goodness sake. Thunderstorm's coming in, maybe? Right, this is the chicken tureen. Zeno said that if they took this off the menu, people would be kicking down the door just to scream at him, basically. It's very, very good. And I'm told that this orange wine goes really well with it. See ya. Right, so this is a Chianti Classico. 100% Chianti, grapes grown about an hour and 20 away from Florence. So it's a real local hero. Slips down like granddad's slipper, mate. Okay, we've got to have some Brunello at the bar. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Brunello, right, this little saucy business here. It's like my favorite. Oh, it's, just like, it's just like getting into a jacuzzi, you know? with Pamela Anderson. <laughs> what do you do when it's raining in Florence? Get ice cream. <laughs> We've come to La Sorbetta. And it's Sorbetteria. Sorbetteria. We have come to La Sorbetteria for some wonderful gelato. Run by husband and wife, Antonio and Elisa. We're going to get inside, meet the crew, and watch them at work. Let's make some gelato. Okay. Bloody fresh ice cream, that. I, I'm, I would never double dip, don't worry about that. We saw this whole process start about 10 minutes ago with the mashing of the strawberries. Let's put the strawberries. And now we're here. And that is extremely, extremely fresh fruity gelato. They have 16 flavors here at the counter. Some are core flavors that stay, but many are changing, largely based on the freshness of what they get in. That is the first ice cream flavor ever created. Then we have the Venezuelan chocolate. Yeah, that's the... pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Chocolate of Venezuela. What are you going for, Jess? Well, I've gone for the coffee one and the nutty one. And together they are, well, they're a match made in heaven, Will. I'm not going to lie. And Will's little brioche sando oh, yes. has gone for pistachio and the tar. 75% chocolate content. All right, Will, I have been banging on about this for a long time. I was so excited about having a big old classic Florentine steak. We're loving it. Bellissimo. What's that? Bellissimo. Bellissimo. Oh. Did some Italian. Who's asking? Italian. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I really like this place. There's a lot of shared DNA between Florence and Rome. But Florence feels a lot more laid back. And the hallmarks of Tuscany are just beauty, quality, and enjoyment. That's really lovely, mate. If you hold hands again. Can I please get some orange wine? TikTok, TikTok. Thank you very much. Between 1629 and 1631, the bubonic plague was going on, right? Having these little wine windows gave them a very safe way to serve wine to people with minimal contact. Because not everyone was dying from the plague, but people wanted their wine. And Bebe is one of the very few in the center of Florence that has a working wine window and will serve you a rosé, a red, a white, and even Aperol spritz from this little tiny but beautiful delivery mechanism. What? See it off, sunshine. 
Thank you very much. Ooh. Absolutely love a speakeasy. However, things get a little bit tricky when you can't actually find it. It's doing too good of a job at being its speakeasy. It's such a good speakeasy that we don't know where it is. Yeah. What number is it? What does it say, mate? Th this is it. Oh! This is the Conte Bianco, which is Rasputin's twist on Negroni. It doesn't have the same Negroni colour, but not on the menu. We're having a secret cocktail in the secret bar of menu space. Cool, yeah. Cool, that's nice. This whole place is proper 1920s inspired. And this cocktail, I feel, would be served you on the Titanic. Mezcal, aged tequila, apple brandy, and topped with Irish cider. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. That's kind of cool. It's cocktails, it's craft beer, it is love craft. Cheers, 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 cheers. Yeah. Top jaw! This old fashioned is made with red turkey bourbon and then some syrup, which is made with reduced red wine, vermouth, and muscovado sugar, and some beechwood smoke. It's an art form, to say the least. Real good. Feeling all right? Feeling pretty good. Morning, man. Ah, achy legs for wine, but look at that. When spending time in the beautiful Florence, of course, you're going to want to have a long, leisurely breakfast brunch, the Italian American fusion that is Cafe Rosano. I'm really loving their commitment to the pistachio now. Pistachio on the coffee, pistachio on every puzzle. Look at that. It looks so good, mate. This is a pistachio cornetto, and one's pistachio with chocolate, pistachio with cream. I mean, I've got like, can I just bite into that? Oh. Mm. It's pretty sweet for the first thing of the day, but it's impressive. That uh, looks like my kind of bag. This is a place where it's just purely Italian. So Will has ordered just two dishes. We don't know what we're going to get. Thank you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so this is an omelette with avocado, salmon, and cream cheese. Oh, that's really nice. And here we have a couple of pancakes, a stack of American style pancakes. Pretty good. Oh, very nice. Let's go for these Nutella ones. Hey, yeah. <laughs> wow, look at the size of that. <laughs> Mate, we should get. <laughs> it's like a bar. <laughs> So Will, you said that you wanted to back to back to back and chain smoke three coffees this morning. So it was two huge vats enough? No, it actually wasn't, mate. Really? Pino's is a sandwich shop that's been here for over 30 years. Woo! Run by a guy called Pino and his family. Will, look at that. And I haven't done that, that wasn't me. That was there when we arrived. Top Jaw Special. And people have been ordering it. How fun is that? Top Jaw Special, Pino, let's go. Let's go. Pochetta, smoked cheese, sun-dried tomatoes, bash, bash, bash. Oh my God, together just onions, spicy and garlic sauce. Voila, bravo. This is your sandwich. Thank you, Martina. Cheers. Cheers, man. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That is good. You are looking at the first sandwich that Pino ever created from this shop, 1991. It's called The Best. So when people come in asking, oh, what's the best sandwich? They just point to this one on the menu. Roast beef, melted smoked cheese, spinach, roasted bell peppers, aubergine, spicy marinara sauce. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, that was our introduction to Florentine sandwiches. And Martina and Pino, oh, want to go like to a barbecue around the house? Is that weird? I think so. This is what I'm talking about, right? Used to be an old haberdasher's tiny little unit. Now it is a sandwich shop called Sandwich Chic, making Tuscan sandwiches. Um, hello. Hi. How are you? Good morning.
They don't have like names, they just list all the ingredients up on the board. This one has the Florentine salami, red pepper jam, and local melted cheese. This one you have the parmigiana, coppola ham, and some balsamic glaze. That looks so up my street. Oh man. And the bread's so soft, but it's got a nice crunch to it, you know? Go on, get your chops around that, it's so good. This really slaps as well. Oh no. Glorious. Glorious. Okay, this wonderful institution behind me is called Vivoli. This site has been here since 1929 and it's still in the same family. It's like third generation now, creating fresh, daily, beautiful Florentine gelato. They also do something here that we've seen pictures of that looks really good fun. They're spinning an affogato, which I really want to get up close and personal with, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. So when I was chatting to Patrizia, she was saying that this is her ultimate combo, with coffee gelato with chocolate chip. I love coffee and ice cream. I love coffee flavored anything. So I was like, yes, yeah, sign me up, I'll have one of those. And it's so good. You have like layers and depth of flavor, and then a little bit of crunch from the chocolate chips. Being no cone, it feels more civilized. You know, you don't feel like you're eating against the clock, they're dripping down your hand, making yourself need a shower. Mate, I'm not joking, it's dripping down your hands. This right here is like an ultimate affogato. They're cream gelato in a frozen mug. That is the trick. The mug has to be completely frozen or else everything would go with the heat of the coffee. What's your approach? Are you gonna just drink it? Oh God, golly, golly gosh. And I think the trick is like, you go in with your spoon and you sort of spoon it out like an affogato. Oh boy, oh boy. Some of the best gelato we've ever had. Where in the world do you think does the best gelato? Please let us know in the comments. We'll be reading. Okay, well, time for one of the most fabulous dinners we're gonna have of the year. Not even just this Florence trip. This is the Michelin starred Chic Nana. Oh, okay, um, is this the most beautiful restaurant I've ever been in? Yes, sir. That stuff up top, over 500 years old. Ooh, Jesus. Really? That's maybe the best one, well, best wines I've ever had. Really? Yeah. It's langoustine and it's been served with the tomato water and basil oil. Oh, that's gorgeous. So good. What we have here is red vine served with a pea risotto. Wow, the creaminess, the saltiness, the tart, the, oh. You can wake up in the morning, put a straw inside this bottle and start. <laughs> like a Capri Sun. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I'm excited, oh my God, I'm so excited for this. It's like pork with a super high fat content, but not so high that it tastes like that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Come to Florence and eat nothing but like Rice Krispies to save money, and then come to Sheet Nonna, absorb it all, take it all in, and be like, oh, and then just go back to your Rice Krispies for like a week. It's worth it. Food was fantastic. I was overwhelmed by staff and beautiful wine and beautiful food, and then that unbelievable setting. I need to like slap myself back into reality, you know, like. This place is called Trattoria. Oh, but cheer. And it is a tradition, Tuscan place. We haven't had any pasta since we've been here. <sighs> Do you have any beds in there? They have no beds, but they have big, pillowy glasses of red wine. Okay. We are getting an abbreviated tour of pasta. We haven't come here with vascuous bellies, right? This is the Parpadelle, my favorite pasta cut with wild boar ragu. Oh. Yes, and they've said no formaggio. No formaggio. No formaggio. No cheese. Oh, holy shit. That is stunning. Woo wee. This is black pork, chest of pork. Formaggio is allowed. Chip, 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 chip. If you're hungry, you're gonna love this, mate. You're gonna love it. So we have our pasta here. What we had poured on it was basically what the pasta emits in the pan. Oh. I love truffles so much. Almost as much as Will loves potatoes. If you're thinking, have they just 
gone to a Michelin star restaurant, had a full meal after everything else they've done today, and then gone to a Tuscan restaurant and had pasta, cured meats, cheese, and the rest of it. Uh, yes. Yum.